So it's 2023 and you decided to make a change in your life. If you're watching this video, you're probably already tired of your nine to five and having a boss that tells you what to do every step of the way. You heard about selling online and you may be thinking, hey, I might make some money out of this. Well, in today's video, I wanna give you a full tutorial of how you can start selling on Amazon this year, because that is exactly what I did. I was able to leave my nine to five and do this full time, making over three million pounds of sales in the process. Now, this won't be quick or easy. There is a lot to learn. Therefore, make sure to get your notepad ready to take some serious notes. And don't forget to come back to the tutorial on parts that you may have forgotten because I'll be going into some crazy detail how you can start selling on Amazon this year. And with that being said, guys, if you are interested in selling on Amazon and you really want to take this seriously, then please don't forget to check the links down below for my own personal mentorship where I myself will help you and guide you every step of the way to make sure you don't make any of those newbie mistakes that new sellers tend to make. And with that being said, let's get straight to the video. If we're gonna start selling on Amazon and we're gonna take this seriously, the very first things we need to do is set up everything. That means the limited company, the business bank account, Amazon professional seller account, Helium 10 product research software, and Alibaba's account. Now, if all of these things make no sense to you whatsoever, don't worry. I will explain every single one of this in today's video. So, with the limited company, you can do this the old-fashioned way. That means you can go into the government's website, put in all of your details, and then effectively get the paperwork within the next couple of days in your post. However, if we want to start selling on Amazon as quickly as possible, it is much better to use Awesome, who is also the sponsor for today's video. The reason why I actually like using Awesome is because they are very fast, they are very efficient, and most importantly, if you ever get stuck at any part of the process, they are there to help you because they know better better than anyone on what it's like to sell on Amazon, given they are an accountancy for all of the big e-commerce players out there in the market. So let's use Awesome for today's example. The first thing we need to do is click on the link in my bio, and this is where they will say 12 pounds to register your company and get a business bank account. Sometimes to open up a business bank account can cost you quite a bit more. So this is a pretty good deal. And as you can see, they will handle your entire company registration process and set up a business bank account so you can start trading right away. If you started without doing so, it may take you a week or two weeks just to sort out the limited company and the business bank account, especially if you go through one of those high street retail banks that we very know and, and have been using for years, okay? So when we click on awesome, the very first thing we need to do is tell them exactly what type of activities our business is going to do. Now, if you're going to be selling on Amazon, then 99% of the time, you will have to put in this code, which basically says retail sales via mail orders via the internet. In other words, e-commerce, Amazon, Shopify, eBay, whatever. This is usually the right one to pick. Now, if you're going to do something else outside of that business and add another activity, you can add that on. But however, as you can see, it is optional. The next thing is the description. Now, for me personally, I am residing in the UK, so therefore I would put in the UK. But if you are um, somewhere else in a different country, then of course you will have to put in the country that you're currently at. And this is the office address that you will have to put in as well. Now, if you don't have a registered office at the moment, then put in, I do not have a registered office. However, for most of us, if you are selling in the UK and currently you are in the UK, just put in your address for the time being. You can change that later on, so don't worry too much about it. Next up, shareholders. Now this is pretty simple to be honest. However, for most of you who will be who will be watching this video, you're probably going to be doing this by yourself. So it's really, really simple. You just have to click on it's only me. Basically meaning that you own the whole company that you're about to set up. You're not sharing it with anyone. If you want to share it with somebody, you will add other people and then you will say exactly what their duties are, what's the share amount that they have and so on. Next up, Capital shares. So after incorporation, you must deposit at least 100 pounds of paid up capital into your company bank account. You must also assign a number of shares, typically a thousand, so you can change these later. Again, don't worry too much about it. Now this basically values your company at the very beginning. However, given the fact that you are a private limited company, nobody will ever get a chance to buy you out. So don't worry too much about it. Just click all done and that's it. Next up, company name. Now I personally put in Ben's business and the reason why is because it doesn't really matter. People spend way too much time thinking what kind of business name should I have and so on. And the reality is it doesn't really matter because who will only care about your business name is yourself, your tax office, 
Amazon and pretty much any other government related body. Your customers will not know what company name you actually have chosen because it is the brand name that actually matters that we will get to speak about much later down the line, which will take a little bit of thought. But when it comes to the company name, don't spend hours and hours and hours trying to come up with something clever because it really isn't that much of a deal. And also you can change this to LTD or limited. Me personally, I prefer LTD, but if you want to do limited, that's absolutely fine as well. Next up, the quote. Now, before we go into the quote, as you can see, it is 12 pounds, obviously plus VAT, and it will set up your incorporation and the bank account as well. However, you can also talk to an expert, okay? And these experts are actual e-commerce experts, so they will know exactly what you're trying to do and they will be able to help you. But what I also like is some of the additional services that you may need, especially if you're potentially going to be employed by your own company or you're working in a uh, different country effectively. As you can see here is the online uh, compliance package, something that you may potentially want to speak to an expert about. PAYE registration, as mentioned, if you're going to be an employee of your own company, Company, you may want to set up yourself as an employee as well so you get some tax benefits later down the line VAT registration if you want to pay VAT from the very beginning and of course the registered address now the reason why this is quite an interesting one is because some people don't want to give out their personal address in the online register they don't want people to know where are they based exactly and this is a great um, uh, basically service that they provide which basically will hide your address they will provide you with an address and the post box where all of the documents will be sent to and that as you can see is going to be for 39 pounds billed annually and that you can add on to the service as well so as you can see awesome is great not just when it comes to setting up the business and the business bank accounts but also you can use very very different sort of services that may come in handy right now or later down the line so we have now limited company set up and the business bank account set up the very next thing and only once the first two things have been done we move now on to the professional seller account with amazon so this is the amazon professional seller account and this is only part of the tutorial where i won't have to be we won't be able to take you step by step and the reason why i can't do that is because i myself already have been selling on amazon for over five years well almost five years and therefore i can't actually create a new account because that is strictly against amazon's terms and conditions and if i go through the whole process and create my own account then both of them will be blocked therefore keep that in mind guys you all will be able to have one account with Amazon's permission. If you get your account blocked, suspended, or something happens to you, make sure you work at getting that account unsuspended as opposed to creating a brand new one because they will be able to connect the two very, very quickly and block both of them. However, there is still something I want to show you that is really, really important. And that is two things. The first one, make sure when you are creating the seller account that you pay very, very close attention to everything you put into the sign up form, okay? That is the business name, the addresses, the passport numbers, everything, the nationality, the full name, and so on. There cannot be any mistakes whatsoever because this is where Amazon's algorithms and KYC processes will check through everything. And if something doesn't match, they will put you into this endless loop full of algorithms, robots, and support staff that you will have to speak to in order for you to actually get your account set up. This is probably the hardest and most frustrating part of the process. And is once it's done, you don't have to worry about it ever again. However, please be careful and pay extra close attention to everything you put into the sign up form sometimes just sometimes they will ask you for a, a confirmation interview or like a, some sort of interview effectively where they will just want to confirm who you are is actually who you say you are to make sure that you are a real person a genuine person that wants to sell on amazon and abide by all of their rules so that's the first thing i wanted to speak about the second one thing i wanted to speak about is choosing your plan now you have two choices the individual or the professional. In my personal opinion, you should straight away go for the professional because of a couple of things. Number one, like I said, if you wanna take this seriously, as you can see, you will have to sell more than 35 items a month. That's just a given, okay? Second, there will be far more APIs and much more selling reports, and you want to get as much data as possible about how many units are you selling, what exactly is selling, what isn't selling, and so on. And you want to sell within programs like Launchpad and Handmade. That doesn't matter too much to you, but in essence, go for the professional right away. Now, this will be 30 pounds plus VAT, 
However, if you don't end up selling on Amazon in your very first month, you can speak to Amazon's professional seller support and they will be able to refund you the money because you haven't used any of their services. However, in my personal opinion, don't go from sell to individual and then move on to uh, sell a professional, effectively switch from one plan to another, thinking, hey, I'm not sure if I'm 100% in this or whatever. Just go for the professional one, save yourself the hassle, and then if you don't sell the first month, just get your money back and don't worry too much about it. Now, once we set up the limited company, the business bank account, which should be very quick, and the Amazon professional seller account, the next thing we need to do is a product research software tool, okay? And this is where Helium 10 comes in. And I absolutely love Helium 10, and I personally have been using them since I started, because not only they're amazing for product research, giving you the most accurate information out there, but they're also very good at running your business on a day-to-day -day basis. And I will go into more detail about what exactly that means, and I will be using Helium 10 further down in the tutorial Tutorial when it comes to creating your own listing and so on. However, with my actual link as well, you can save up quite a bit of money for 20% off in six months value. And most of the time, these are the plans that are going to be available. In my personal opinion, just go for the cheapest one, which is the platinum plan, which is $7 $79 at the moment, as you can see. And if you don't like it, you can get your money back within seven days. Get that plan effectively because then it will give you the access to all the necessary tools you need, not only to find your product, but also to run your business every single day to calculate your profits correctly, to make sure you are in stock most of the time. So there's various tools to make sure that you don't run out of stock. There's tools to make sure that uh, you are ahead of the competition and so on. Again, something that will be touched on later down the line, very, very quick and easy to set up. You don't have to worry about it too much. It's just a quick payment process and you're ready to go. Next up, Alibaba, okay? Alibaba is effectively the Chinese version of Amazon. However, it is mostly used by wholesalers, trading companies, and manufacturers. This is where all of them will get together and advertise their products to people all across the world. And this is the main website that I use to find my suppliers. Again, once the first four things have been sorted, this is when you move on to Alibaba and create an account. Now, unlike Amazon, where you have to put in a lot of information, Alibaba is extremely simple and easy. You just go into join for free, and then it will take you to this website, fill in all of this information here, so what country you're from, for me personally, it will be UK, your email address, your login password, the no mobile phone number, which is very important, the company name, your full name, of course, your company address, whichever aligns with the company address effectively, uh, that you've put in, slide to verify and that's it, agree to register. You do not have to wait for anything. You do not have to do anything else. Straight away, it will allow you basically to create an account and speak to suppliers that will be able to provide you with that very first product. Now, once again, later down the line, we will get into do how exactly do you negotiate with your suppliers, what to say, what not to say, and how to get the best possible price. But until then, this is the very first part of this tutorial, which is basically everything to do with the setups. All right, so the next part of the tutorial is going to be by far the most important part of this business. And if there's one thing you can master out of this tutorial and get out of anything is product research. Now, when it comes to product research, it comes into two phases. The first one is the idea generation. It's exactly just coming up with different ideas and ways of coming up with ideas of potentially for you to look into further. The second part of the product research that we're going to be speaking about today is the actual research part, the analysis part. How do we distinguish that this product is going to do well, this one won't, and most importantly, how can we make sure that we're going to stand out from the rest of the competition, get onto the first page, and make those sales that are currently happening on Amazon. There is going to be a lot for you guys to learn, so make, one, make sure that you actually write this down on a notepad, come back if you need to, because this, like I said earlier, is going to be by far the most important part of this business model, because guess what? If your product sucks, no matter how good your listing is, no matter how good your advertising is, no matter how fancy your images are, if it's getting negative reviews, or if there's just not enough demand for that particular product, you are destined for failure. So make sure to pay close attention. So let's talk about the very first part, which is ideally the, the idea generation. How do we come up with different ideas? Now, 
I personally use three ways, okay? The first way is actually away from Amazon, it's actually away from the computer, and just looking around when I go to my nearest shops to what people are looking for, what are they shopping for, okay? What are they interested in? What are they talking about effectively? When it came to the pandemic, what people were looking at was more around the medicine side of things, the face masks, the strings, and all of these sort of things. That was what I was interested in. But I also was looking into basically every single day, if people are staying at home, I'm always using my common sense thinking, okay, what are people using? What are people doing? What could I potentially introduce into the marketplace that currently would sell extremely well given this time of the year, these sorts of conditions and so on. So you have to turn on this hat where you are trying to find a potential gap in the market during a certain time of the year or a certain situation in the country where you can potentially profit and benefit from. I personally will give you an example. During the pandemic, instead of selling face masks that everybody was selling, I was selling these sort of strings that you basically attach over your ears. I was selling them for 30p, I was basically buying them for 30p each and selling them for £4.99 giving me a very, very healthy profit margin. And I did not use any of the product research tools at the very beginning at least, because I just wanted to come up with ideas that I could benefit from during that situation where everybody was facing uh, faces they were covering, they were staying at home, they were quarantining, and therefore I wanted to make sure that I will get something that people are very desperate in need of at that moment in time. And this is where I was able to profit very, very nicely off that particular product. However, so that's the first part. The second way of getting ideas effectively is by using things such as bestsellers, hot new releases or movers and shakers on Amazon's actual marketplace, okay? And you can use many, many different categories out there, but there are a few that I would actually recommend you to stay away from. Anything in relation to Amazon, where you know Amazon Launchpad renewed apps and games or anything like that, I personally would stay away from. The, the best ones, in my personal opinion, that I, from my experience, have made the most amount of money on is automotive, baby, beauty, um, electronics and photo, garden, health and personal care, home and kitchen, uh, lighting, luggage, and sports and outdoors, stationary and office supplies, and toys and games. All of the other categories out there, you may be thinking, well, why? There's so many categories. Why do you not go in some of the others that are not mentioned? And there's a very, very good reason for that. First, I don't go into things such as fashion, for example, or handmade jewelry or something like that, because those type of items are very fashionable, and therefore I do not want to go into products that can change very, very quickly in demand. Also, when it comes to selling t-shirts, sweaters, dresses, and all these sort of things, basically the refund rate for those products is very, very high. Where usual items, let's say in the kids niche, or baby niche, or beauty niche, is one to 5%, i.e. for 100 items ordered, five of them will be returned in the fashion and the clothing part of side of things you will get a refund rate of anything between 20 to 25 percent think about the last time when you bought something that just didn't look right on you what did you do you gave it back you brought it back however when usually you buy items that are not fashion related you most of the time tend to keep them and that goes for pretty much everyone I always stay away from things such as large appliances, for example, PC video games, because I don't know much about them. But large appliances as well means those are big products. And that is something that I personally stay away from as well, because if the products are large, that means the risk is going to be quite big as well. And when just starting out, you want to keep the risks as low as possible, because the chances are the larger the item, it's going to be expensive. And if it's going to be expensive, it's going to be expensive to store. And if worst case scenario, that potential product does not sell, it will be getting you storage fees each and every single month. Think about it this way. What is going to be cheaper to store on Amazon? A thousand toothpicks or a thousand chairs? Of course, it's going to be the toothpicks because they, cup, they take up a lot less space in the warehouse than Amazon, uh, than, than the chairs will. So you have to always, always keep that in mind, guys. With that being said, so let's have a look at, for example, movers and shakers in beauty. Okay, let's see what we can look at. And I will tell you my thought process on each and every single item to see, you know, what could potentially work and what may not work. So the very first thing 
is a unique grande women's mini gift set uh, body mist fragrance spray now i'm a little bit concerned with sprays because we at the end of the day we are buying products from china we are not sure exactly what's in them are they good are they could potentially be dangerous and so on so i personally always think from the perspective of what could possibly go wrong okay and i personally would stay away a little bit from sprays and also who knows if you just started selling on amazon amazon may not even allow you to sell things such as sprays because you're a brand new account you don't have any sales history and therefore certain categories may be gated and that particular one may be gated also so i personally would stay away from that one then you have an epsom salt resealable pouch unscented mineral salts again personally not too big of a fan especially when there is almost 10,000 reviews clearly there are customers that keep coming back and clearly they enjoy this item coca-cola a very very well-known brand i'm not going to go there dove same thing britney spears perfume perfume very well known brand so we just keep on looking etc for something that potentially will catch my eye as you can see right now there is a bunch of perfume and stuff that i'm personally not really interested in keep on going let's have a look a spa gift set okay so maybe not particular gift set like this with a bunch of creams and stuff but a gift set of items that are pretty safe pretty normal pretty standard potentially would be a shout so i'd definitely be interested in that okay i'll have a look at shower steamers this looks quite interesting as well but as you can see you can have so many ideas for you to look into further okay and you don't have to click on that particular item that you may find interesting like for example bomb cosmetics this is quite interesting so bomb cosmetics handmade uh, bath blaster gift set contains seven piece so i believe this is like a bath bombs effectively and then what I would do it, I would go all the way up to the top and I would actually put in the search term bath bombs. Okay. And then it would actually come up not just with bath bombs, but also it will show me what else people are searching, especially if you use the Helium 10 software, what other products are searched when they are typing in bath bombs. As you can see, people type in bath bombs 108,000 times, bath bombs for women gifts 48,000 times, bath bombs for kids and so on and as you can see just from one idea i can look at all of these keywords and all of these different products you can have for women you can have for kids you can have for boys men a gift set uh, with a toy inside and so on and you can actually get an idea as well which one is the most popular search term and which one are not which is where helium 10 really really comes in and is really really helpful so that is one way of actually getting product ideas okay we've spoken about looking around the house looking around your surroundings whenever you go shopping we've now spoken about movers and shakers this is another way of getting ideas or potentially even moving into like the best sellers side of things as well as you can see if we go into all we have best sellers new releases and movers and shakers and now i will find you and i'll basically provide you with the best one the one that i use most of the time for myself when it comes to generating ideas for me to look into further and that is helium 10 black box okay now this tool you will need effectively for you effectively to uh you will have to buy it the helium 10 the software that i mentioned earlier but this is brilliant especially the black box tool because what this allows me to do is actually put in various criteria okay in any marketplace that i want so it's not just the uk it works for america canada france italy pretty much every single marketplace that um, amazon operates in so i'm going to choose uk okay and now i can put in any category and any sort of criteria and it will actually give me the uh, the results that match that criteria okay and this is really important and let me just show you an example so let's say we are interested in baby products okay so we're just going to select baby products do when you're doing this choose one criteria at a time because nine times out of ten you will be uh, amazed at how many results you will actually get the next thing is review count now a lot of gurus out there will say hey you cannot ever go into products that have a high review count number I have a difference of opinion because high review count basically means to me that this particular product has been selling for a long time. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't bring in something new, innovate, and therefore get above them on the first page. So I personally either would leave this blank, but for this case scenario, I would leave that at 100 reviews, okay? So that product basically is in the baby niche and it has 100 reviews or less as of right now. 
okay the review rating personally i will leave it blank okay i want to get as many results as possible shipping size as well again i personally would either leave it blank or i would put some things such as standard parcel small envelope standard envelope whatever to make sure that the product is not too big not too bulky we really don't want to have big bulky products especially in the very beginning so instead of the shipping size what i'm going to do is i will put in under two pounds okay and for those of you watching in other countries this is under one kilogram okay number of images leave it blank variation count leave it blank keywords doesn't matter listing age again doesn't matter i want to have as broad of a spectrum as possible with only the key um category selected okay number of sellers doesn't matter at all all of this doesn't matter but what does matter is the price and this one matters a lot okay and let me explain why when you're starting to sell on amazon basically what you want to do is you want to learn as much as possible and reduce your risk as much as possible the reality is the amount of lessons you will learn from a five or ten dollar pound or pound product is exactly the same lessons you're going to learn from a 50 pound product the only difference is is the risk because if the product is 50 pounds on amazon that means it's going to be very expensive on alibaba as well and therefore if you're going to buy five six hundred units it will cost you a lot of money to start up with so that can easily cost you five six seven thousand pounds in the very beginning and that is very risky if you don't have any experience whatsoever so in my personal opinion you should always go for products that are anything 15 pounds or under ideally even 10 pounds or under because if the product is cheap on amazon it will most likely be cheap on alibaba now yes you may not make as much profit in the very beginning but the risk is a lot lower as well and here's something you don't know and some of you basically people won't actually tell you this is that the best return on investment is actually at the lower price points basically what that means is if you buy something and the total cost for product i.e the product and the shipping is one pound it's much easier to flip that to two pounds i.e get a hundred percent return on investment as opposed to buying something for 10 pounds and getting 20 pounds back okay so it's much easier to double your money when the products are cheaper than when the products are much more expensive however as you gain more experience as you gain more capital and you get more confident around this business model then go ahead you can go up to more expensive products and therefore make more money but less of a return on investment so for this case scenario i'm just going to leave it 15 pounds and under once again guys don't use this as a textbook okay you can play around this with this a little bit to find out exactly what will work for you what kind of criteria works for you and so on okay i'm just using this as an example monthly revenue this is also a very important one because i want actual products that making money that are actually making sales so a monthly revenue of a minimum of a thousand pounds i think is almost a non-negotiable okay you cannot leave this blank because then it will come out with a lot of products that are not selling at all and we are not very interested in products that have no demand whatsoever so i will leave that at monthly revenue monthly sales if we put monthly revenue this can be blank best sales month is an interesting one i will leave this blank for now okay however what i want to let you know guys is that certain products will sell well during certain times of the year for example a halloween costume will sell extremely well during halloween but it probably won't do so well in summer a christmas jumper will sell extremely well during christmas but it won't sell well during august or something like that okay so you want to either leave this blank or if you believe that that product that you're looking for and you're going to start selling it let's say two three months from now you may put in that particular month because that is when the sales are at its highest okay so something here which is kind of like a negotiable you can put in the certain months or you may potentially not want to i will leave that blank for now and then i will click on search now what this will do is this will all of a sudden show me all of the products effectively on the Amazon's marketplace that fits that criteria, okay? And this is a great way for me personally to get various ideas that I could then look into further. So let's just check if it actually matches the criteria. The very first one product. In, first of all, it's in the baby product niche, which is the bamboo dry wipes, okay, great. Next, it's under 15 pounds, which is exactly what it matched monthly revenue of five thousand pounds i mean that is amazing right 
reviews 92 reviews which basically means that this product has not been selling that long or basically the seller hasn't gained that many reviews because there's not that much to review but again reviews are quite important and then the best sales period is in february of 2022 and the age uh, of the listing has been 29 months okay and some of these are actually quite interesting because for example take this uh this product uh washable leather sole slipper socks they only have 55 reviews but they have been selling for 119 months that is quite interesting isn't it why this product has been selling for years effectively and only gained 55 reviews this person is something that i would look into further but most importantly what i want to say is all of these potentials are ideas for you to look into further. Don't just go into one product, oh, hey, hot water bottle, I'm going to buy this one because it does a lot of in revenue and it's selling very well and it doesn't have many reviews, so this is the product that I'm gonna go for. This is just the initial part of the process which is the idea generation, okay? And all of these are potential ideas. Some of them are good, some of them not so good potentially, but it will give you a very, very good idea of where you can start. For example, hand warmer uh, scented with French lavender. Again, very, very interesting, making 7,000 pounds at 14 pounds right now. However, the best sales period is December, so you have to keep that into account. Maybe when January, February, March comes and Christmas sales are out of the window, it won't sell as well okay so you have to always put your common sense hat on and think will this product do just as well as it is doing right now a few months down the line so with that being said this is where the idea generation part of the process is done now we will move on to the actual analysis okay and for today's video i'm going to use yoga mats as the uh, best product effectively to analyze a potential product this is basically one of the most popular and talked about products on amazon it's a very very nice simple product to explain and i think it's a great example for us to use for this video and in order to analyze a product i personally do a couple of things okay the very first thing is i'm going to use helium 10s once again using helium 10 as you can see it is getting quite helpful helpful to us isn't it and it will get even more helpful later down the line you'll see why I will use the extension called x-ray and this is where Amazon's product research really comes in because it provides us with a lot of really important information that we need to use um, in order to make a decision on what to buy what not to buy and so on this is basically all of the information you need right now to make a potential decision okay this is basically will tell us exactly how much each listing is selling how many units are they selling uh, how much is the total revenue effectively what is the sales price and so on and let's go through each part effectively and I will explain what what matters to me, what I'm paying attention to, and what I'm not paying attention to. So, first things first, the total revenue. This basically means that all of these products on this listing, or on this page effectively, it has made over 859,000 pounds. That to me is a big, big plus, because that means there is a lot of uh, demand for these products right now, and anything over 100,000, in my personal opinion, is actually a good sign. The next is average reviews, average uh, average revenue, sorry. And that is 19,000. I personally care about average revenue because this basically shows me how spread out um, sellers are uh, on the page. Is it a case where one to two products are basically selling half of all the revenue or is it spread out quite evenly? And right now, having looked at all these products, as you can see, quite a lot of them are over 10,000, which is a very good sign once again. Next up, the average price. Now that is a problem. Given the fact that the average price is 34 pounds and I wanna start off nice and slow, not taking too many risks, the fact that these products are quite expensive could be a potential issue. So I will have to keep that in mind. And then the last but not least, average reviews. Now a lot of people will get scared by this number. I mean, 2000 reviews, Jesus Christ, you will never get onto the first page, right? There's no chance of you ever getting on the first page. But then what I'll do very, very quickly before jumping onto other things, I just wanna show you why this makes no sense whatsoever. Because if the average reviews is what matters for you to get on the first page, then how comes this listing with zero reviews is on the first page? How come this one with 91 reviews is on the first page? This one with 10, this one with three, this one with one, with 61 with 400, with 91, with nine, and so on. So as you can see, reviews is not the main indicator whether or not you're going to get onto the first page or not. What matters is, do you provide a solution? Do you provide a product that our customers are interested in buying? 
whether that's because of your price, it's cheaper than everybody else, maybe it's better quality, maybe it's just different to everybody else. And that, guys, is the key to this game, is bringing out a product that customers are going to be willing to buy, okay? If they are willing to buy, even if you have one review and all of a sudden the sales start flooding in because of one reason or another your product is very good, it will end up on the first page very, very quickly. I've seen that time and time again where a lot of my students will actually get onto the first page where the average reviews is way in the thousands and all of a sudden them with a couple of reviews, they're on the first page making a lot of sales. So keep that in mind guys and don't get put off by it too much. The next thing I want to do is actually start looking at the products themselves, okay? I will actually sort this by revenue, and let me tell you exactly what I'm paying attention to. The very first thing I'm paying attention to is the actual product itself. I wanna find out why is this product selling currently 193,000 pounds in revenue in the last 30 days? That to me is really, really important. What's so special about this product? I would actually click on this product and investigate. What is the, is it something about the pictures? Is it a very well-known brand? Is it, you know, uh, potentially the price or whatever? Why is it so good? I would actually read the reviews. Maybe it's just better than everybody else. I mean, given the fact that it has four and a half star rating has something to do with it, surely, okay? Then what I'm interested in is the brands, okay? Is there one brand that dominates this niche? And as you can see, Maximo Fitness right now is selling a lot. Therefore, clearly it's a relatively good brand. People trust them, people buy from them. But also there is another brand that has one, two, three, four, five, six listings selling in large quantities. Now that to me is a problem, guys. And the reason why is because it will make it really hard for me to sell and to introduce something new that customers are already used to. They know these two brands. So it will be really hard for me to actually you know, beat somebody who already has that reputation established. Again, first flag with the 34 pound price point, second flag here now with the two brands dominating majority of that niche. Again, that is a problem. The next thing is price, okay? This is where the average price comes in, and as you can see, most of these products are above 20 pounds. If we're gonna start with cheaper products, this would straight away be a red flag and I would actually move away from it, okay? So something again to keep in mind. Sales graph, this is also interesting because it shows you the sales graph over the last 30 days. Is it going up, is it going sideways, or is it going down? And for each product, it may be different, but right now, as you can see, all of them started off relatively high, but it's coming down uh, in the last few days effectively. You can actually expand on that and click on it and over, you can actually see the graph slope where it's trending over the last 30 days, the last 90 days and the last year as well. And this is also really important to know because if you look at every single product and all of them have a sales graph of going down, that is basically a reduction in demand over time. And that is a red flag. And, is, and you have to ask yourself, do you really want to go into a niche where the revenue and the demand is coming down across multiple products over time? Something to keep in mind. Next up, where the company is selling, from what country effectively, the fees, um, the review count, the images, and so on, okay? But like I said earlier, the most important parts are the brand, okay? Is there a well-known brand? What are the prices? the reviews and the sales graph. And this is where I will do my initial research. Once that is done, okay, if I still see this as a having a potential product, the next thing I would do is start reading the reviews. I want to read into the reviews, but not what people are saying that's positive. I want to read what people are saying that is negative, okay? Because the negative reviews is basically where you will actually get a much better understanding. What are people complaining about? What are they not happy about? Maybe for this particular product, they're not too happy about the size of the product or the quality of the product. Maybe it's too slippery or something. Maybe it's just too expensive. And this will give me a very, very good idea and start getting me to think, okay, when I'm speaking to my suppliers on Alibaba, these are the things I have to check. These are the things I have to make sure that they fit in the box effectively because if I'm going to sell this product, I want to make sure that I reduce the amount of negative reviews that I get and I stand out from the rest of the competition. So that is something that I would also do for all of these products, okay? All of these products I would look into, what are people complaining about? I have to become an expert in this field effectively before I buy my very first product. And the more research I do, the less risk I'm going to have because I have looked at it from every single angle. So that's that. The very last thing when it comes to the product research side of things, guys, is Google Trends. Now, Google Trends, you may have heard of it before, you may not have. Google Trends basically is a 
public tool, it's completely free of charge, but it is extremely useful to determine what people are talking about, what people are interested in, and when it comes to selling on Amazon, is what kind of products are people looking at at certain times of the year. Now, in certain products, the trend will be relatively flat, i.e. basically the product is just as popular in December as it is in January, as it is in, in, in March, as it is in June, July or whatever, right? However, there are certain products that will be very trendy at certain times of the year and then the demand will completely collapse um, over time, okay? Let me show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. Let's put in Christmas jumpers, okay? You probably already know what it's going to look like, but I wanna show you anyway, okay? As you can see, Christmas jumpers, probably not the best product to sell because it will only sell well during November and December. And then after that, you have no sales coming in at all for most of the year, about nine to 10 months of the year. So let imagine the scenario where you buy a whole bunch of jumpers and those jumpers, for one reason or another, get delayed and they come in in January you basically will not make any sales at all for the next nine to 10 months. Is this a risk you're willing to take? In my personal opinion, not so much. And this kind of tool um, will help you determine whether or not there is a certain trend in that particular product. Some of them will be very obvious, like Christmas jumper, but some of them, not so much. For example, sunglasses. Okay, the first time I didn't actually thought about it, but sunglasses is also a trendy product with the demand peaking every single summer. And it makes sense because the daylight, the amount of daylight we have every single summer is much higher than the amount of daylight we have in winter, which is why more sunglasses are being bought at certain times of the year. And this is an interesting one because I personally wouldn't step away from this. I will just keep that in mind when if I'm going to sell sunglasses, I want to ideally start introducing them around March, April time before the peak of the demand comes in. Okay, again, something really, really important. Uh, another one, Halloween outfit. Again, same thing like a Christmas jumper, something that you really, really want to keep pay attention to, okay? And then let's say a non-trading product like, uh, I don't know, a keyboard or something, or let's, let's, let's do yoga mat, okay? You've already seen it, not trendy at all. Okay, as you can see, it was trendy very well during COVID when it started off, but then it peaked down and back down, leveled out effectively to normal. There's not going down or anything like that. Also, one more interesting one I want to show you, fidget spinners. As you can remember, probably they were very, very big at a certain time of the year, quite a few years ago, and then completely fell off. And this is what it looks like. Some of them will be seasonal, and some of them will just catch a trend where everybody buys it all in one go, and then completely fall off straight after, never to be seen again. Those products, guys, are very, very dangerous. So be careful next time you see a product on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, and you think you're going to buy it and make a lot of money, because it could be a trendy product that will have some something like this where the demand is crazy, but by the time your product comes in from China, it's already on the downtrend and all of a sudden you find it really difficult to sell out that five, six, 700 unit order that you made from Alibaba. Keep that in mind, guys. All right, so the next part of the tutorial is all to do with suppliers and most importantly, negotiation with suppliers because it is key for us to get the best possible price for our products and to make sure that the product is of good quality so we don't get a whole bunch of negative reviews that would tank our listing and no sales would be made in the long term. However, guys, there are a couple of things that I really want to speak to you about in today's tutorial because there are certain things that new sellers tend to make that can be quite costly. They can make a lot of mistakes and it's just simple due diligence that they don't do that will cost them in the long term. So we are on Alibaba. This is basically what the website looks like. We will type in yoga mats. And before we start looking at the mats, the very first thing I want to do is just look on the side here. Okay. I want to look at what are the supplier features? So effectively trade assurance and verified supplier. So trade assurance basically means that if there is any problem with the order, let's say it doesn't come in on time or let's say it doesn't come in uh, within uh, specifications that you decided and you agreed upon, then they have agreed to provide a potential refund to the seller, uh, effectively um, you, right? So if you ever have any problems or anything like that, those are the suppliers you're better off dealing with because if there are any issues, they have 
said yes to Alibaba that we will provide refunds. Okay, so we click on that and straight away that should reduce the amount of suppliers that we can speak to. The next part is a verified supplier as well. So basically this means that Alibaba required extra documentation to prove that these suppliers are exactly what they say they are. They are not in the middle of nowhere, not actually doing what they say they're doing, whatever. So we'd actually click on verified supplier as well. And this is basically just us doing due diligence to make sure that the suppliers that we are speaking to are religious. Okay, it's as simple as that, that they are who they say they are. Now, I will leave this under one resp hour response time because sometimes the suppliers will just use chat bots or just bots in general to respond to you as quickly as possible and therefore get that metric up. Okay, so I will keep that blank. Next up, minimum order price, all of that, leave it completely blank. After that, this is where you use uh, the countries, okay? This is where you can choose what kind of countries you have. Given the fact that I have these two selected, I can only select from China right now, but if I had them not selected, I can look at countries such as Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, and so on. Okay, I will leave that blank. I will leave these blank. Product certifications, again, leave it blank and so on. So this is the very, very beginning. The next thing I need to do is start looking at the actual products. Now, at this moment in time, we should have already a good idea of what we are looking for. We should know exactly what type of material we are interested in, what kind of color of the product we should be interested in, what kind of uh, you know shape, size, price, and so on. When it comes to price, the one thing you need to not look at effectively is what it says over here, okay? A lot of gurus, a lot of uh, you know fake mentors effectively will tell you that this is the price that you are going to pay per piece. And that couldn't be further from the truth because it does not include shipping. And shipping will have to be calculated by the supplier on a case by case basis, because shipping to Germany will be different price to shipping to America or UK or India or Dubai or whatever, okay? So whenever you see these sort of prices, don't think that, hey, because this is t only 10 cents, this is what I'll be paying. That is not the case, okay? So don't worry about that whatsoever. You will actually have to speak to every single supplier and find out that price. The next thing I look at also is the amount of years that this particular supplier has actually been on Alibaba. And right now, as you can see, this particular one has been there for five years. That's a decent amount. I tend to personally stay away from anyone that's one to two years, because if I'm new to selling on Amazon, chances are they will be new supplying people that sell on Amazon. And therefore, I will have to teach them the whole process, what they need to do, what they don't need to do. And I just don't have time for that. So therefore, I will make sure to always pay attention as to how many years they've been on Alibaba and how experienced they actually are. Also, I would look at the amount of reviews that they have and whether or not they're verified. As you can see, they're verified because I already clicked on that. But the reviews are also very useful. Just like with Amazon products, you want to have a supplier that usually have good reviews as well. This one, for example, 4.7 sounds like a decent supplier. So therefore, I'd be interested in contacting them if I'm interested in the products that they have. So once I have determined which suppliers that I'm potentially interested in, I will just click on the this little compare button. OK, so let's say I'm interested in this sort of yoga mat. I'm interested in this yoga mat, whatever. And there are different yoga mats basically for me to choose from. Some of them you may have seen on Amazon already. Some of them are going to be completely new and you're like, oh my God, what the hell is that? This looks quite interesting. I will pay more attention to and therefore you know, speak to that supplier. Maybe it is something new that I can introduce, okay? This is also very, very interesting. So therefore I'll choose that one just a couple of more just for this example effectively. And that's it. Now, when it comes to actually doing this for real, I personally advise for you guys to speak to as many suppliers as possible, minimum 40 suppliers. Okay. Now it may sound a lot, but the reality guys is very, very simple. Out of the 40 suppliers that you speak to, 20 of them will not respond to you for one reason or another. Maybe they're on holiday, maybe they're busy, maybe they're not taking you seriously, whatever. Out of the 20 that are left over, 10 of them are going to give you ridiculous prices, prices where you will never be able to make any profit whatsoever, okay? So that narrows to from 40 to 10. Then out of those 10, some of them will not be able to speak English or not understand exactly what you're trying to get at, what exactly you want, and therefore that 10 will go down to five or three or whatever very, very quickly. So when I say speak to loads of supplies in the very beginning. It may sound overwhelming at the start, but that number get cut down very, very quickly. Okay. And also, if you speak to more suppliers, you will actually get a much better understanding of what the real price should actually be. If you just, you know, if you're lazy and you just speak to a few suppliers, 
you don't really know what the correct price should be. Maybe they're taking the piss out of you and actually going to get you to spend a lot more money and make a lot more money out of you uh, if you do not know better, okay? So by speaking to a lot of suppliers, you actually get a much better understanding of what the price should be and it puts you into the position of power because if one supplier is offering $5 per product and the other one is offering you $4.50, then maybe you can start a competition and a bidding war on who's going to give you the best possible price. And that is very difficult to do if you're lazy and you only speak to a few suppliers. So like I said, 40 supplies at the minimum, okay? So once we get to up to 20, because it will only allow me to go up to 20 and then I have to do this again on page two, three, four, whatever, I will then click on contact supplier, okay? And this will take me onto the page where I can basically send out a message to all of them all at one time, okay? So click on that, hopefully it works. So eventually when I get up to this page, this is where all of the suppliers will be listed. Now you don't have to type in anything on the product attributes or anything like that at all. Leave them blank. What I want you to do, nothing on the quantity either. What I want you to do is go at the very, very end and this is where you will type in your detailed requirements. This is the message that every single one of these suppliers is going to get and will have to respond to as quickly as possible. At least that is in their best interest. And this is usually the message that I will put in, okay? And let me explain why. Hi, my, ben is, uh, my name is Ben, and I would be interested in buying a thousand units of your yoga mats. Could you please answer the following? Now, why am I choosing a thousand units? even though I'm interested in only 500. Well, this gets them more interested because uh, it's a higher number, effectively. They may potentially think I'll be making quite a bit of profit out of this particular person, and it gets them much more likely to respond to you and to actually give you a good price because the price for a 1,000 units will be different for 500, will be different to 200, and so on. The more you order, usually the cheaper the price per product is. So by going the extra to a 1,000, you will get an idea of what the real price should actually be and then you can start pushing it down to 400 500 600 and saying hey this is just going to be a sample order at this price and then the next order is going to be at a thousand or a thousand five hundred but you always want to start big and then cut down as opposed to the other way around but most importantly what i want to show you guys is what i'm not saying okay I am not trying to big myself up that I'm this big company in the UK, multi-million pound or whatever, whatever. I don't want these guys to know. I want to get just enough. I, I, I want to reserve as much information as possible because if I'm going to speak to 40, 50, 60, 80 suppliers, I do not want all of them to know how great I am, what I'm doing, my address, and all of these sort of things. Remember, you are speaking to a lot of people here, so you really want to keep a lot of information to yourself. And only once you have narrowed down to the best the very few that are best, then you can give them a little bit more information about yourself, your address, and so on, okay? So keep that in mind. The next thing I would like for you to keep in mind is also remember that Chinese, English is not their first language, okay? So that means you have to keep things very, very simple. Don't try and sound too professional. Don't use email jargon or anything like that at all because they simply won't understand it and they don't care about how professional you come across. They're there to make business. That's it. So when I make these sort of messages, I really dumb it down as much as possible because I know they will appreciate it and also it will get things moving much, much quicker. If they see an essay, they most of the time will just not respond because they don't understand what you're asking or they will start asking you a whole bunch of questions which are already the answers included in that essay. So please keep that in mind. So the first question is, what is the product price? Really, really simple. For a thousand units, what is the actual product price? Don't tell me it's the 10 cents that I saw because I know it's not true. Second, what is the lead time? Basically, that means is if I buy the product today, how long will it take for the product to actually be sent out? Some products will be able to be sent out straight away because they're ready, they're there, they're available, they can be packaged up and sent off. Sometimes they will have to be manufactured. So sometimes it can happen basically where you make the order, it will take a month for the product to be manufactured and then it will take another two to three months for the product to actually come in, okay? So keep that in mind. Usually you want to buy products that are readily available so you can start selling as quickly as possible. And just like I said, in the very beginning of the tutorial, the quicker, we want to sell as quickly as possible. We do not want to be waiting around for months and months and months. Then what is the shipping cost of the UK? 
just to give you an approximate so you can calculate the total cost of the order. And then could you provide more information about the product? So things such as material, size, quality, and you kind of want to see how engaging they are in this conversation. Do they actually want to sell the product or did they just give you one worded answers and that's pretty much it, okay? And this is pretty much it with the first message. You do not want to give any more information from your side at all. If anything, you can ask a few more questions, uh, effectively what type of shipping terms are you using or anything like that but that's it okay now when it comes to shipping okay and this is something that's also important to cover is lighter products simple products effectively products that are very very light will be able to be used via air days will be shipped via air and it can take anything from one to two weeks for those products to come in and that is very very advantageous for you because you want to start selling as quickly as possible the problem is that shipping via air is very expensive and there is the other part of shipping, which is via train or sea. Now this is much slower. It can take anything between four weeks to 12 weeks for that product to come in, but it is a lot cheaper, okay? Like vastly cheaper than shipments via air. So when it comes to shipping products, my rule of thumb is very simple. If the total cargo is under 100 kilos, i.e. the total weight of all of the products is under 100 kilos, I will prioritize air, via C as opposed to C because I want to get the products as quickly as possible and I want to start selling. If it's over 100 kilos, I will have to result to C shipping. So therefore, this is where inventory management really comes into play because you have to think, how long can I stay in stock with my product if it's gonna take two to three months for that product to come in? Once again, that is something that you have to keep in mind and certain products will be coming in via air, certain products will be coming in via C. It all depends on the weight and the size of the product. All right, so the next part of the tutorial is all about creating your very first listing. By this point, you should have everything set up. You have found your product that you want to sell on Amazon. You have negotiated the prices and you have actually bought the product. Like I said earlier, it can take anything from two weeks for the product to arrive, depending on where you are, all the way up to three, four months potentially, okay? In the meantime, what do you do? Well, the very first thing you need to do is actually create a listing. Now you may be thinking, well, why would I create a listing right now? I don't actually have the product but that, that's okay, don't worry about it because even if you create a listing, it will not be active on Amazon's marketplace until you actually have products in the Amazon's warehouses. So you can start creating the listing and potentially optimizing the listing, which we'll speak about in a bit, and actually get more things moving. So when the products do reach the marketplace, it is all ready to go, you can start selling right away. So. This is what the Amazon's dashboard will look like for you, okay? Maybe a little bit different. You may not have any sales or orders, but it will look something along the lines like this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we'll go on to here, catalog and add products, okay? This is how we will basically create a brand new listing. Now, we're going to use the same example for yoga mats, and instead of putting in a product name, we are actually going to create our own separate listing. Even if you're going to be selling a product uh, like a yoga mat that is very, very similar to pretty much all the others out there, you are still going to be adding a product that is not sold on Amazon. You will create your own listing where you have a control over the title, the key features, the images, and so on, okay? Because this is the private label business model that we are talking about. We are not trying to jump onto somebody else's listing to make a few sales. So the next thing is by we need to select a category, okay? Now we can do it the old way, the easy way, or the quick way, or whatever. So there's two ways. The first one is, if we're gonna sell yoga mats, we either can go through browsing through categories and potentially go into sports and outdoors and find it that way, or we can just type in yoga mat here, or gym mat, or whatever, and see if Amazon can actually pick up what we want to sell. And as you can see here, it comes up with two potential uh, categories for us to fit in. Either sports and outdoors, fitness, yoga and mats, or fitness, exercise and exercise mats. If we're gonna sell a yoga mat, most likely we should go for yoga that has something with yoga in it effectively. So I would select this particular first one, okay? Now between these two, in my personal opinion, it doesn't matter too much. However, you always have to pay close attention as to what category your product is under. Because if it is under the wrong category, let's say we are selling yoga mats, but we are under, I don't know, a bath mat or something like that in a completely different category, then that will severely impact our search results and we may potentially be not selling anything at all and there is n we will have no idea why and that is because we simply selected the wrong category. So selecting the correct category is really, really important. So what we're going to do is we click on that and this will now take us to the page of 
back basically actually creating the actual listing and putting in all of the information okay so first things first we need to type in the item name okay now in the very beginning what we want to do is focus on one thing and one thing only and that is just to create the listing pretty much almost all of the things that we're about to put in here can be changed okay but what we want to do is just have an active listing on amazon or basically a listing that has been created on amazon then we can edit later down the line so the uh, things such as title the key features the images can be updated later down the line so in the very beginning if you don't have all of this information correct or, or, or straight away there it doesn't matter as long as it's created and as long as it's on your dashboard that's all that matters okay so what we'll do here is very very simple we'll do yoga mat gym mat for women or whatever okay just to make sure that this required field has something in it next up we will put in our brand name okay but uh Next up, what we'll do is we'll actually select that this product does not have a brand name right now. Now, for those of you in the very beginning, what you may want to do is basically select this because you don't actually have your own trademark just yet, okay? Once you have started selling, and you have realized that this particular yoga mat is going to sell well into the future, you may want to actually create a brand name. This is where a trademark actually comes in that is registered on the public register that basically says that these products under this trademark belongs to your business. In the very beginning, you can just sell generic products and it's not a problem, however, but when you have a trademark, you actually have additional protection because what that means is, is that if somebody jumps onto your listing and starts selling exactly the same yoga mat and wants to steal some of your sales, you can kick them off. If you are selling it without a brand name, that means you have absolutely no right to kick them off whatsoever. So in the very beginning, in my advice is to go the generic route just to get a feel for it, just to make a few sales, just to see how it works. And then after, once you realize that this is a legitimate business, that I'm not telling you lies, that you can actually make money out of this, then you will register a trademark, which usually takes about four to six weeks for you to get approved. Once that's done, we move on to the product ID. Okay, now, this is very, very important. And so many people make the mistake here because product ID basically means you need to give Amazon AI unique product identifier, basically to tell them that these products belong to you. But where do you get this ID? Where do you get this code effectively? And the best way to get this is by going to a website called GS1 UK for the UK customers or UK sellers. Um, you can go GS1 US for US and so on and so forth. And what you'll understand here is that these codes are not just being used for Amazon. As you can see, they are being used by eBay, Google, Tesco's, and pretty much any other big retailer out there. And as you can see, GS1 is the only authorized provider the, uh, that, that basically provides the number to use under the barcode, also known as EAN or UPC, the unique for that code. So what that means is that this is a global database where if you sign up, the codes that are belonging to you, they can be seen by pretty much anyone, okay? And they can be authorized that these codes belong to this business. Now, there are going to be a whole bunch of websites that can potentially sell you barcodes much cheaper, okay? However, the problem is, is that they may not be legitimate. And if you buy illegitimate codes and you use them from Amazon, first, they may not work. And secondly, later down the line, you may find your products being banned, blocked, suspended, or whatever, because they cannot verify that the code, i.e. the product, actually belongs to you. So in my personal opinion, go with the GS1 to avoid any potential issues in the future. And the way to do it is very, very simple. You basically have to create a membership effectively, uh, ignore all of these sort of things. And these are the three membership plans that you can go for. You can go for the starter 10, the starter 100, or a standard membership for all businesses, okay? Now, which one should you choose? Well, in my personal opinion, in the very beginning, go for the cheapest one, the starter 10, because you want to save as much money as possible. You want to basically grow the business and not spend where you don't need to spend, okay? Now, you may be thinking, well, I need more than 10 barcodes, right? I want to sell products in the thousands, right? But however, what you have to understand is that you only need one barcode per product. 
Now that product may have a thousand, 10,000 units. It will only need that one barcode. So right now, by you getting the starter 10 pack, you can sell 10 different products, okay? They can have thousands of items in them with thousands of units in them, but 10 different products. Once you have scaled up and your turnover is, you know, over uh, 100,000, you can then buy the starter 100, or you can get the standard membership, which you can then get up to a thousand um, barcodes, okay? But in the very beginning, keep your costs as low as possible and therefore go for the starter 10. Once you buy it and you sign up for the starter 10, you will simply get like a PDF or you get a database of those 10 codes and you simply copy and paste one of them into a field right here, okay? So once you have put in the code, now we get these fields open up, the vital info, offer, and so on that have to be filled in order for us to save and finish. The first one is the product description. Now, this one doesn't really matter too much because I'll let you in on a little secret. Most of the customers that go and actually shop on Amazon will pay most amount of attention to the images, okay? They will pay attention to the title, to the key features, and the images. Very, very few of them will actually go down to the product description and read it in detail to find out about the product in more detail. So most of the time, I don't pay too much attention to the product description. And for this example, I'm just gonna put in yoga mat just so we can say that, hey, we have typed in something, okay? Next up, the bullet points. These are the bullet points effectively that go beside the listing, okay? Those five bullet points that sell the listing. And these are actually quite important, guys, and therefore pay very, very close attention to what you put in because you need to pay attention to two things. Number one, you have to pay attention to actually using the keywords that people use to find your product. So keywords such as yoga mat, gym mat, a yoga mat for women, for men, a fitness mat or whatever, they need to be put into the bullet points here and I will tell you how to find these keywords very soon. And then after, make sure that you put in five different key features. Now by focusing on the SEO and you also have to focus on actually selling the product. Don't just use this as a keyword stuffing exercise. You want to actually convince customers to buy from you as opposed to somebody else. And that guys is super, super important. Okay, next up, so I'll put the yoga mat here as well. Okay, next up, manufacturer. Now, what you want to do here is put in any name whatsoever, but the one name you don't want to put in is your actual supplier's name, because many of the competitors can actually then go onto the listing, look where you bought the product, and actually speak to the manufacturer directly and potentially undercut you on the price uh, and bring in exactly the same product. So you want to put in pretty much anything here. Now, you may be thinking, well, is Amazon gonna verify this or not? Trust me, they won't. So make sure not to actually put your company's name or, or your, your manufacturer's name in here, okay? Next up, offer, okay? Offer is very, very important as well, guys, because these things will still be able to be edited, but you want to start off on the right foot and you actually want to put in the correct information, in my opinion, because it can get quite difficult to change the price later down the line, because if you make big changes, like from 9.99 to 39.99, Amazon may say, hey, there's something wrong here, okay? So condition, new, obviously. We're going to go fulfillment. Now, this is where we can choose. Either we'll get Amazon to fulfill the products for us, they will handle the returns, they will handle the customer service and stuff, or we can actually fulfill it them ourselves. In my personal opinion, if you are by yourself and you're just starting this business and you don't have people employed to help you, go with the fulfilled by Amazon. That is the beauty of this business model is the fact that you can scale up pretty quickly and you can put all of the logistics, everything onto Amazon where they will pick pack, collect, send off, deal with the returns themselves without ever you getting involved. So then you can focus on bringing in more and more products and therefore growing the business. So I will select this and then straight away the quantity disappears because they will straight away say, okay, no problem. This particular uh, listing will actually not go live until we actually get the products in our warehouse, okay? So therefore you don't have to put in the quantity anymore. And then we will just put in a price, let's say this case, 19.99, okay? So offer is done, vital information is done. Let's see what we still need to do a product uh, details. Okay, now this is the material. Now these things are quite important guys, but once again, like I said, you can change it later down the line, okay? So don't worry too much if you don't have all of the information right away. So we're just gonna put in material, let's say cotton or whatever, I don't know. Blue, part number, it can be pretty much any number whatsoever, okay? Is the product expirable? No. 
sport type, I'll say yoga, okay? Again, this is just to complete the listing. You can change these things later down the line, and you can't. You can ask a little bit more information, um, you know, from this uh, from your supplier about this particular product if you want to make sure that you put in all of the information correctly from the very first go. Okay, but this time I'll just use ten and then centimeters thickness. Obviously, it's not going to be ten centimeters. That's way too thick. But for this example, we'll just put that in. Okay just so we can go on to the next part. The next part, safety and compliance. Now, safety and compliance, we will tell where the products are coming from. In most cases, it will be China. Are batteries required? No. Dangerous goods regulations, that basically means, do your products have like batteries, electrical components, or anything like that? In most cases, it will be not applicable, okay? And then we don't have to do any of this because we already don't have that exclamation mark anymore. And then we'll move on to images, okay? Now images, this is really, really important. And this is where, if there's one skill that you really need to master when it comes to selling on Amazon that will come really handy, is the images. How to make sure that your product stands out from the millions of yoga mats out there. How can you make sure that you, people come onto your listing and actually pull out their credit card and buy the product as opposed to do that on somebody else's listing? This is where you really have to take the time, watch the tutorials on my potential course or potentially some other tutorials as to how to do good graphic design images to make sure that your product stands out from the competition. How to actually sell the product because the customer don't really care what they read they care about what they see on the screen whether it's on the laptop on an iPad or on the mobile phone and actually believe it or not 30% of all purchases now are being made on mobile phone something to keep in mind when you are doing these images like I said this is explained in detail on my course and it would be just way too long for me to go into detail as to how exactly edit these images it is easier than you think but it will take a little bit of time for you actually to get you for you to actually get an idea of how it works now if you have a lot of money and you don't want to do this, you can employ a graphic designer to actually do this for you. However, in my opinion, if you're gonna take this seriously, learn how to do it yourself, because for one product, graphic design is not a problem. But if you're gonna start selling 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 70 products like I do right now, if I had to pay a graphic designer each and every single time, that would add up to a lot of costs and therefore reduce my profits quite dramatically, okay? So learn how to do the images correctly to make sure that you sell the product as best as you possibly can okay and last but not least shipping shipping once again here the item package dimension so the packages that the product actually comes in what is the dimensions of the item now once again this does not really matter because what happens is when you actually send the product into Amazon the very first thing the staff are going to do is measure out the package and measure out the actual item itself and they will correct the listing to the nearest millimeter okay so just type in literally once again uh, this is what I do actually all the time, just 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters or whatever, just so I can tell them that, hey, I'm now ready to actually create this listing and so on. So two pounds and that's pretty much it, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll go back onto the vital info. Clearly I didn't put in manufacturer, so Ben's business, okay? And now, as you can see, there are no more exclamation marks and now I can save and finish. And you can only save and finish when every single tab has been put in all of those details. And like I said in the beginning, you don't have to put them all correctly straight away. Once you have created the listing, you can just go on the edit button and then change anything you want. You can change the description, you can change the bullet points, you can change the images, the price, whatever. What you want to do is simply click save and finish and be able to actually create that listing so then you know for a fact that you are now able and your account is, is okay to sell that particular product on Amazon. What you don't want to do is actually buy a product don't do this listing and then once the product arrives you realize that for one reason or another you can actually sell this product whether it's because it's medical because it's bladed before it's gated or something like that so you always want to create the listing as quickly as possible to make sure that you are allowed to sell what you intend to sell 
All right, so the next part of the tutorial, what we need to speak about is listing optimization. How do we make sure that our listing is optimized and therefore shows up to as many pages as possible that customers use in order to find our products? Because in this yoga mat example, some people will use yoga mat as keywords to find a product. Some people will use gym mats. Some people will use fitness mat or whatever. And some people will use key phrases that you haven't thought of. So how can we find out all of these key phrases that we can then use to put into our listing. And this is where Helium 10 once again comes into the rescue. And I actually, I genuinely really, really like that tool because it's really, really useful. So what we have to do now, once again, is we have to go back onto Amazon and I'm going to go back onto yoga mats and I'm going to go for the best selling listing, the Amazon's choice for yoga mats, this Maximo listing, which if I remember correctly, was selling over a hundred thousand pounds in revenue. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy their ASIN. Now, for those of you that don't know, ASIN basically is a code that Amazon assigns signs when you created the listing. This is how they know that that particular listing belongs to that particular seller. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to go into something called Cerebro. Now, this is a tool that I absolutely love. Okay. This is where we basically put in our ASIN. Okay. Actually, as you can see, I already copied it here. You get the keywords and what it does, basically, it will show me for this particular listing, it ranks for 2,440. Uh, uh, different keywords. And these are the keywords that people use to find that listing. Okay. But what's important here is not the actual keywords. What's also really, really important for me is to find out what is the search volume for these keywords. Because for example, thick gym mat only has 95 searches a month. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of that particular keyword. Therefore, I don't really pay much attention to it. However, something like an exercise mat is a definitely a keyword that I want to actually index for because if I can get onto the first page for exercise mat, I will definitely be making sales. And as you can see here, if we scroll all the way to the right hand side, you will see that organically that particular product that is selling so well is on the first page and the very first one organically on a lot of these keywords. And I mean, no wonder why it's doing so well, because it is selling so well, because it is appearing on the first page on so many of these keywords. I mean, gym mats, yoga mats, workout mats, and so on, as you can see second and so on. So for this example, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the very top. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to prioritize the keywords that have the most amount of search volume. Now, sometimes you will actually go for keywords that have like over a thousand search volume. Sometimes you can go as low as 500, but ideally you want to prioritize the ones that have the most. So what I'll do is, and this is something quite interesting. I will copy and paste every single one of these to another tool used by Helium 10. And that is called Scribbles. Okay. Scribbles is a great tool to use because this allows me to actually put in all the phrases and then use that to create my title and by bullet points. In other words, the key features. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back going back and forth between Cerebro, one of the Helium tools and second tool, which is Scribbles and basically come up with all of the keywords that I want to index. Now, this exercise usually can take me anything from half an hour to an hour. So to make this tutorial not too long, I'm just going to use a few phrases just to get an idea of what exactly am I going to be looking at and doing and focusing on. So copy and paste thick yoga mat. Okay. Let's have a look if we can find something else. Okay. Exercise mat. Okay. So we're going to put that in as well. So we just click enter exercise mat. Let's have a look. This one, a little bit too low, thick Pilates mat. Don't really care for that one. Don't care for that one. Don't care for that one. Fitness mat. Okay. A thousand searches. That is pretty handy. If we can rank on the fitness mat first page, that will be really helpful as well. Let's keep going down uh, yoga mat that is thick. So basically yoga mat thick. Okay. So copy scribbles once again, let's find two more <clears throat> go down Pilates mat extra thick. So we can just put in Pilates mat and then I'm going to just type up extra thick. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, let's keep going. As you can see, a lot of these keywords don't actually have that much search volume. So there's no reason for us to actually, um, you know, target them. Gym mat. There's a good one. Okay. It has over 6,000 searches in the last 30 days. 
Okay, so we're going to put in gym mats and then we're going to click on apply. And what this does now, it actually separates the two. It separates the phrases and the words. And right now when I'm creating the title, I have these words to keep in mind and I have the phrases to keep in mind as well for the title as well as the bullet points. And this is where the tool really, really comes in handy because what I can do now is, let's say I want to put in fitness mat. Okay, and straight away you can see that the two words have been taken away, so now I don't have to focus on them anymore, and the phrase that I've targeted as well has now been used up as well. So now I have one less phrase and two less keywords to focus on. So fitness mat, okay, we can put in, uh, what else? We can put in a thick, uh, not think, thick yoga mat, yeah? We can also put things such as gym mat, uh, mat for women, etc. Okay, and as you can see, this title keeps getting longer and longer, and you want to keep this relatively short. You want to really pay the closest attention to the keywords that work the best for you effectively in terms of relativity. Which keywords that when people click on, they expect to see a product like yourselves, okay? So you don't want to go on to keywords that don't really um, apply to your potential listing, okay? So you want to make sure that the title is not too long, it's not like a key feature, and you only has the main most important most highest search keywords in there this should not be three four hundred characters okay I don't even think Amazon will allow you to have such a long title but you want to keep it nice short and sweet and straight to the point and sometimes if I can I will put in things such as not necessarily for SEO purposes but let's say my one is pink okay so I'll put in the color pink as well because um, that gives a customer to you know an idea of what the color is effectively and if some Somebody types in pink yoga mat it's very very likely that they will buy from you straight away because all of the other yoga mats may be of different color whatever okay so that's the title sorted now after that we need to go on to the bullet points and this is where a couple of things come in so the first one is a little trick that I'll tell you on this tutorial is always use emojis. It's a very, very little subconscious thing, but if you just have emojis at each and every single one of your key features, it just makes the listing stand out a little bit more, make it a little bit prettier, and all of these little things, if it can just improve your sales by 1%, if you extrapolate that by thousands and thousands of orders, it can make a big difference. So always, always make sure to put your best foot forward in making the best possible title and the best possible key features. So we're going to do like a little emoji, okay, like this. And then we're gonna put in um, highest quality exercise map. Okay, so straight away, as you can see already, another keyword has been taken off. Okay, and then I can put in uh, our yoga mats uh, or yoga mat has been designed. Uh, so hold on, yoga mat. As you can see, another keyword taken off. Uh, our yoga mat have been designed by professionals etc 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 you get the point so basically what I'm trying to do here now is two things number one I'm trying to put in as many of these keywords across these five bullet points as possible and you should have a lot more than what I have here I'm just using this as an example and what you need to do also is sell the product always remember that you are selling not to a computer not to an AI bot or anything like that you are selling to people you are a person you are selling to another person so for those small minority of people that will actually read the bullet points you really want to convey the message that hey we are selling a good high quality product and make sure that you buy from us as opposed to somebody else now before I end this part of the tutorial what I also want you to guys to do is also in one of the bullet points it can be the second one it can be the third one it can be the fifth one make sure to say that hey if you are unhappy with our product for any reason whatsoever make sure to message us first okay we will make sure to make it right by you however way possible whether it's a refund or whatever we will make sure that your satisfaction is guaranteed okay and what this does is really simple it incentivizes customers to message you first before they leave a negative review okay so if they are not happy with the product they may ask you for a refund if you give them the refund you may actually reduce the chance of you getting a negative review and those negative reviews if there's too many of them on your listing it can really impact your conversion rates and therefore your overall sales something in my personal opinion that you guys should keep in mind 
Now this next part of the tutorial is all about shipping the actual products from your house to the Amazon's warehouse. You can do it two ways. You can either get the Chinese supplier to ship it to you and your house first, which is what I recommend for all of the new sellers out there. So you can see exactly how the product comes in, how it's packaged, is it damaged or not? And then you ship it from your house to the Amazon's warehouse. And the way to do that is by creating a shipping plan, okay? So in this part of the tutorial, what I want to do is actually teach you exactly how you can create a shipping plan so the product gets sent off on time. And most importantly, it doesn't get lost on the way there, which can happen. But if you take this seriously, if you do the right steps, the chance of that happening is very, very little. So once you go on to manage inventory, and this is what your page is going to look like with loads of products effectively, you're gonna go on to one of your products effectively, the one that you want to actually send to Amazon. You're gonna go on to this little, little uh, arrow here, and you're gonna go on to uh, send and replenish inventory. Now, before that, what I also want to quickly touch on is the print item labels part. The print item labels basically is the little barcodes that has to be attached by yourself, Amazon, or the supplier in order for Amazon staff to be able to be scan the product whenever a purchase is made. Now, what I do, and this is the cheapest way of doing things, is actually print the item labels or effectively get the PDF file, which you get literally by clicking on this and then selecting how many labels you want and you will get a PDF file um, generated by Amazon and you will send that PDF file to your Chinese supplier so then they can stick on e the barcode on each and every single product. So that is the cheapest and the quickest way of doing things. The second way, you can print the barcodes yourself and therefore get them printed yourself and therefore stick them on yourself once the product has arrived into the UK or your home marketplace or whatever. Or you can just pay Amazon to do it for you. Now, I don't really like paying Amazon more money than I don't have to. And for each and every single barcode that gets stuck on, they will charge you anything between 50 15 to 20 cents or P. So make sure to ideally either use the Chinese suppliers to barcode the products for you or do it yourself. You really want to cut your costs down as much as possible. So that is something that you really have to pay close attention to going forward. So once you have sorted that out, okay, and let's say in this case, the Chinese supplier has printed them all off and now you have got the products in your house and you need to get them to be sent to Amazon. What do you do? How do you find the address and so on? Okay, this is really, really important. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on send and replenish inventory. And we're gonna come up to this page right here, okay? And this is what we need to do. We need to basically create a shipping plan. What this basically means is we need to tell Amazon what exactly is coming to the warehouse, how many boxes, how many, is, how many units in each box and everything. Basically tell them what exactly they should be expecting. So what we do here is first things first, we need to ship from another address and we need to type in the address that these products are coming from, okay? In your case, you will have to put in your home address effectively so they know exactly where this product is coming from. So if they find a product that's coming from this address but it may potentially be missing something, then they can kind of figure out that it's coming from you as opposed to somebody else. Then you say which marketplace destination it is. For me, it's going to be in the UK, but you can choose pretty much any marketplace destination. And then you're gonna to have to create a case template here, okay, so the packaging details. I already have created one, but let's just click on this very, very quickly. And as you can see here, what I need to do is, one, I need to type in the package uh, template name, which really doesn't matter, the template type, which will be the case pack, and then how many units in each box. Now it can be five, it can be 10, it can be 50, whatever. Usually if it's a big product, it will be less per box. And if it's a small product, you can usually fit in more in a box, okay? And then you will have to put in the box dimensions of that product as well, of the actual carton box. So in this case, it's 40, 40 by 30, and the actual box's weight. And also who labels the units, okay? Is it going to be you that label the units or your supplier, which in this case it is, which means by seller, or will it be by Amazon, which as you can see right now, it's already gone up 0.25 per unit, okay? Which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you times that five by 500 units, that does add up to quite a bit of money. In this case, I think it will end up to 125 pounds. That is 125 pounds then you can easily save, okay? So I will sit it by seller. And then I will just confirm and continue. Then once we have selected, let's say one box, okay? We click on ready to send. 
The next thing we need to do is confirm and continue. So right now, all of these sort of things, we just need to confirm and make sure that Amazon knows that you have checked through everything. The details are correct. You know which address is coming from, you know what the box size is, and you know how many units should be expected. You do not want to get this mistake uh, mistaken because then they will start telling you off that, hey, you are sending more than you tell us. That is a problem. We may potentially stop you from sending additional units or whatever. So confirm and continue continue. The next thing is, once it eventually validates the SKUs, then it will tell us to confirm the shipping. Okay, ship date. What date are you going to ship this product from? Now, this, to be completely honest, guys, doesn't really matter because what happens is that this shipping plan will be live, alive and active, whatever, for the three months from the date of the shipping. So I'll put in today's date effectively 21st, but you can select any date in the future. It doesn't really matter. And what you can see here now is the shipping mode. I can use Amazon's UPS um, partner program effectively, and it will cost me £3.40 to get this shipment sent off. Okay, which in my personal opinion for a box of 55 units is actually quite cheap. If I was using DPD or FedEx or whatever, it, it would be much, much more expensive. So I would take that on board. I would then say then, yes, I'm happy with £3.40, but let's say you have your own carrier or whatever, then you can select one of the other carriers here and then you click on accept charges and confirm shipping. Once you have clicked on confirm shipping, what will happen then is you will be getting these sort of tracking codes, okay? You may have seen these before, but basically with UPS, you will get these codes, usually there are 11 or 13 digits that start with, with one Z. That is the code, that is the tracking code for your parcel, and it will be used for you to actually schedule a collection. You can either put your box basically into the back of your van or into the back of your car and send it to the nearest collection point for UPS, or you can actually get, schedule UPS to come in and collect it from your house, which is what I usually do, and it's not from my house, it's actually from my warehouse. And let me show you very, very quickly how to do it. So you go on to Google, you type in a scheduler collection with UPS, and then you will put in the code that Amazon has given you now that you have paid for that, um, that, that, that shipping, that shipment effectively, okay? So we'll just copy and paste that code, and then go down, and then you will actually be able to type in all of the details here. As you can see, the company name, the address it's coming from, the city, the postcode, the telephone, okay? As you can see, these are the fields that are required by UPS for their collection. After, you will select how many packages for that collection, and it can go up to 30 if I remember correctly, and you will say the total weight for that collection. Now, this doesn't have to be completely 100% accurate, so don't worry too much about it. UPS is not gonna say, hey, it's too heavy by a kilo, and therefore I will not collect it, but just for them to manage their expectations as to what they should be expecting on the collection is pretty good to have it roughly an accurate figure effectively, right? And then after that, you will tell them what collection date, given that I didn't put in the details, this is not available right now, but then you will uh, you will be told, okay, when do you want us to come and collect that particular product, okay, or that particular box? Usually, if you collect, if you schedule this collection before 11 a.m., they can collect it on the same day. If you don't, the earliest date you will be able to collect it is the very next day, okay? And usually the collections go from Monday to Friday. And once that's done, what you'll do then is you'll simply print off the label that Amazon has given you once you have paid for the charges, and you will stick on that label, usually it's an A4 piece of paper on each and every single box. So in my case, it would just be one label. For some of you guys, you will have to print off an A4 piece of paper, and they may be four, five, six labels, however many boxes, it will be one label per box. So just to confirm, just to basically, you know, basically let you know what you need to make sure that is now done is once the product has come into the UK, you need to make sure three things. The first one is that they are barcoded. Okay. Either though they have been barcoded by the supplier or you have done the barcodes yourself unless you want to pay Amazon to do it for you. The second is that each and every single box has a label on it generated from Amazon by making that shipping plan. And therefore now UPS can come in and scan that, uh, th that, that box effectively. And therefore the tracking information will be updated. Okay. Each and every single box has to have a label. And then the third and form and just as important is you need to schedule a collection. If you don't schedule a collection and you don't do anything about it, those boxes will just sit in your bathroom forever. So you have to make sure you either schedule a collection 
or go to a collection point and drop off those boxes for UPS to come and collect them. Once that is done and UPS has come and collect them, most of the time they will deliver it to Amazon anything between three to five working days. Now, during peak periods such as Christmas, New Year, Easter or whatever, or if the postal is on strike, it may take a little bit longer, but nine times out of 10, usually will take anything between three to five working days. And the last part of today's tutorial is all about advertising. Now you may be thinking, why is advertising important? Shouldn't we just start selling straight away? No. The reality is when your listing actually goes live on Amazon, it will end up on page 20, 30 or whatever, then no customer will ever visit for your product to actually be sold. So what you have to do is you have to kind of imagine as you standing on top of a hill, okay? And the hill is very, very snowy and you have to get the snowball rolling. You have to forcefully push yourself up onto the first page and get those initial sales, get that initial sales velocity. And then once that happens, then you can start actually uh, reducing the amount of advertising spend and your organic ranking is eventually going to go up onto the first page where you will start making sales organically and very, very profitably. But in the very beginning, most of the time, you will have to use either Amazon PPC, which in other words is Amazon advertising, Facebook ads, Google ads, influencer marketing, whatever. But to keep things simple, I'm just going to use the easiest way possible and that is Amazon's advertising. So what I want you to do is basically go on to the campaign manager over here, okay? So I have it selected here, bookmarked, but if you want, you will just literally go on to advertising and then campaign manager, and then it will take you to this page right here. Now, as you can see, I have throughout my lifetime spent over 143,000 pounds on ads. Now that may sound like a lot, okay? And believe it or not, it is a lot. However, what it does, it helps me rank each and every single one of my products. And because it increases the amount of sales that I get, even if I don't make that much profit off those sales, it will push my organic ranking up higher as well. And that guys is really, really important. Of course, it is important for you to keep those products selling profitably for as long as possible. But sometimes even if the ads are not as profitable as you would want them to be, you still want to have those advertisements keep going because then the organic ranking will be pushed up and therefore you will make more organic sales too. So what you do is you create campaign, click over here, for you, obviously, it's going to be 000 in the very, very beginning. And then you have to select a campaign type. Now, you, in the very beginning, you may not even have these two options available because these are for sponsored brands. So for example, a sponsored brand would have like the, at the very top uh, where it's at the very, very beginning, you will see that brand and the few of its products. This is a very, very effective way to get your brand name out there. However, it is very, very expensive. And then sponsored display as well. This is where you actually put in a video which really makes you stand out from the rest of the competition. But once again, it is very, very expensive and only useful if you really want to build up a brand on Amazon. For most of us, it's going to be sponsored products, okay? Next up, we're going to go on to new campaign. And now this is where we have to type in the ad group name. And what I would suggest here to do is very, very simple. Just put in your actual product name, to keep it nice and simple, okay? Because you don't want to leave it blank because then you will forget which campaign is for which product and so on. So you always just want to put in the name. Next up, choose the actual product, okay? So we're just gonna use one of my products right now. Next up, targeting. This is where you have to tell Amazon, are we going to use automatic targeting or manual targeting? In my personal opinion, I always recommend to all of my students, it doesn't matter what level of experience you have, to always go with manual targeting. Amazon basically wants you to spend as much money as possible on advertising because for them, it is pure profit, okay? And by giving Amazon that 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pound budget each and every single day, they will use whatever they can to get that budget spent. And not necessarily in the best way possible because they just want to spend that budget and not necessarily care about your profits. So for example, if we have gym yoga mat for women in our title, we, if, and we choose automatic targeting, Amazon may choose, the algorithm may choose to put your uh, product for women's gym, okay? And people may click on your yoga mat when they type in women's gym, but chances are they're not actually looking to buy a yoga mat. And for every single click that you get on your listing, you will have to pay. So you want to really put in your manual targeting and therefore 
put in actually the keywords that you want to be ranking yourself. You want to tell Amazon, these are the keywords that I want you to be placing my product under and nothing else. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing, when you choose manual targeting, the next thing you need to do is either keyword targeting or product targeting. So keyword targeting is based on what people actually type in. The product targeting base is based on which product. So when somebody clicks on a product, your product will come in underneath it. Okay, in my personal opinion, I just like to do keyword targeting because the product that you may be targeting may go up and down in rank and therefore it's not very reliable because if that product goes out of stock or if it falls off the rank then you will automatically fall with it which is why I always recommend using keyword targeting. Next up Instead of using suggested bid, because Amazon will always suggest you to go for the suggested bid, you go for the default bid, okay? And I always will put 50p for each and every single bid, okay? And then what I can do is I can just, these will be all of the keywords that Amazon will um, suggest for you to go and I will just add all of them under 50p in the very beginning. Now, the difference between broad, phrase and exact in my personal opinion, in the very beginning, you should see Amazon's advertising as like a funnel. Okay, you want to give all of the keywords as as chance as possible to prove themselves that they are profitable to you. And then as you get more and more data, as you get more and more information, that funnel will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, exact keyword basically means if you put in yoga mat for women, then the customer has to type in yoga mat for women in order for your product to come in. You want to be there. Phrase will be yoga mat for, for example, or yoga mat, and then you can be there as well with phrase. And broad is the broadest out of the three, which basically means yoga for women, for example, and your yoga mat will show up as well. So you want to go for the exact phrase and broad because neither you nor me at the moment know which keyword is going to work the best for you, which is why you want to give every single keyword a chance. And then based on the ACOS, which is the advertising cost of sales, you will determine which keywords work the best for you and which ones you should take off completely and not target anymore. And once that's done, you go all the way down you will put in potentially some negative keyword targeting. So for example, this as you can see is optional. I personally leave it blank because I don't know which keywords will work and which ones not. But for example, if you believe that gym mat, for example, is not gonna work for your particular product, you can then put that in. So therefore Amazon knows for a fact we cannot put your product on the gym mat phrase, okay? And then campaign bidding strategy, leave that as down only. Okay, basically meaning that you Amazon cannot, you don't give them the right to increase your bids by a maximum of 100% in order to push you in order to convert a sale. Okay, you want to only do down only. And as you can see, there are little things amongst creating the new campaign that Amazon wants you to spend as much money as possible. Okay, with an automatic campaign or with a dynamic bids that are up and down, or just in order for you just to literally increase the bidding so therefore they can make more money themselves don't let them do that. You want to keep your costs down as much as possible. Then the campaign name, once again, we will put in yoga mat. And the start date, I usually leave the end date as blank and then daily budget. Now for most of my products, matter of fact, all of my products, the daily budget is 20 pounds, okay? That doesn't mean I will spend 20 pounds. Sometimes it may go up just to five pounds, 10 pounds or whatever, but once it reaches the 20 pound mark, that's it. My advertising campaign straight away will go out of budget and I do not want to spend any more money out on budgeting. Now, if you leave this potentially daily budget blank, then Amazon has the right to charge you as much as possible. So you really want to put in somewhere here something, okay, that you are comfortable with being charged the maximum amount every single day. And then as you get more and more data, start looking at your reports as to which keywords actually work for you and which ones don't. Now, this is, isn't exactly an exact science because PPC for one product is going to be very different for another. But, and this is where exactly why I speak a lot in detail on my course and with my students because some keywords will work for some, others may not work for others and we discuss and evaluate which, how we should play this effectively. But PPC management all comes with experience. So in the very beginning, if you're spending a lot of money, 
look into it more okay try to read up a little bit more maybe go on a course or something like that to try and understand exactly how advertising works to make sure that every single one of your sales or as most of them as possible are profitable as opposed to actually losing money because what may actually happen is you are selling and you may get happy because all of a sudden you see sales coming in but your advertising is through the roof and therefore you are losing money with each and every single unit that you sell and that is not a position that you want to be in and that's pretty much it for today's tutorial guys now i have to be honest there are quite a few things that i did leave out and this is because each and every single one of you is going to have a different journey some of you are going to have a bigger budget some of you are going to have to start off smaller some of you may want to leave your nine to five while others just want to supplement your income this is why this tutorial gives you a very good understanding of what's about to come if you want to take this business model seriously and like i said in the very beginning if you're serious about selling on amazon and you really want a little bit of extra extra help, a little bit of extra support, and your budget stretches to actually get extra support, then please don't forget to check the links down below for my own personal mentorship, where I myself will help you and guide you every step of the way to make sure you know you don't make any of those newbie mistakes that new sellers tend to make. And also you will get a course, a step-by-step -step course that goes into far more detail about what we spoke about today in a lot more detail actually, and actually take you step-by-step -step on what you need to do, and also include other modules such as, um, you know how to scale up your business the accountancy side of things how to manage your advertising how to do the images things that we couldn't actually speak in today's tutorial with that being said thank you so much for watching and i'll speak to you soon bye bye